Klop. <coughs> Hallo, mijn naam is Keshwani. Dat is K-E-S-H-W-E-N-A. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 150. Today is our lesson number 37, day 37. So please turn to page 137. Page 150, make sure that you read the problem first before you continue watching the video. You must have the book in front of you. If I can say the same about my markers, that'll be great. There we go, I found it. Alright, let's see what we have here. We have machine X. Let's put on two sides here. We have uh, machine R and we have machine S. We are told that machine R makes X units in 30 minutes. We are told that machine S machine S working at a constant working alone at a constant pace produces X units in 48 minutes. All right. X units in 48 units. What are they asking? The number of units the machine R will working alone will produce in three hours. Oh, no, very good. So this is your column A. This is your column B, if you will. And the question simply is. How many units will it make in three hours here, and how many units will this guy make in four hours? We are asked to compare the two quantities. Let's do it together very, very quickly. X units in 30 minutes, which, is, which implies that it will make twice as many, twice as many units in one hour. Obviously, because 30 times 2 is 60, I don't need to explain all this thing, you understand? Uh, if it makes a, so if whatever, it, whatever, whatever the amount of job that it does in half an hour, it's going to do twice the work in one hour because it works at a constant pace. That's what we are told here. Therefore, the question is, how many will it make in three hours? In three hours, in three hours, it should make three times the amount. It's very simple, very straightforward. It will make six x units in three hours because it's three times the amount. Very simple, very easy. So that's your answer, six x. Let's go here. This is where the things are going to get prickly. Things are going to get prickly. If you do not do this problem in a smart way, if you try to do this problem, the, here's what happens. The problem is that when most people, when they're taking the GRE, they have this tendency, they have this uncontrollable urge to do every single problem in a very classical way, very algebraic way, very traditional way, very orthodox way, the way that you're taught in the school. You have to be a little creative. For example, we are asked here, how many units does it make in, uh, we are told that, rather, we are told that it makes 48 units in X, it, it makes X units in 48. We are told that it makes X units in 48 minutes. And the question, the question is, how many? How many in four hours? Now notice the difference between the work. Here we did not do anything. We simply continued. We simply continued from what was given to us because everything is a nice multiple. X units in 30 minutes, therefore 2 times X units in 1 hour, therefore in 3 hours it's going to make 3 times and so on and so forth. With the 48 minutes it does not work that nicely. So, let's see what happens. We have 4 hours. 4 hours that, that are given to us, 4 hours that are given to us can be broken up into, guess what? 4 hours that are given to us can be broken up into, believe it or not, 4 hours which is 48 minutes plus 12 minutes, 48 minutes plus 12 minutes, 48 minutes plus 12 minutes, 48 minutes plus 12 minutes. That's how I looked at it. Because 48 plus 12 is 60. So this is your first hour. This is your first hour. In, the, in this 48 
in this 48 minutes, we are told that in 48 minutes it makes x units. So we are going to make x units here. In these 48 minutes, we are going to make another x unit. In these 48 minutes, we are going to make another x units. In this 48 minutes, it makes another x units. Now notice, notice for a brief second, I, I don't know how observant you were, but just now, for a brief second, as I was going through it, I realized that 48, 48, 48, is, we're going to get 4x here. And for a split second, I changed, I turned my neck here to see what it was here. Now, had this been 4x or something less than 4x, it would have been the end of the story. Had this been 4x, then the answer would have been b because we already have 4x's here plus we got all these 12 minutes left over. So you got to you got to adapt to the core problems. Don't just keep solving the most people keep solving the problem on and on and on until you get to the final answer and then they look at what it is going on. You must be always you must always be cognizant of what is given to you and what is being asked. Let's see if we know this word. Let's see if we ever learned this word, cognizant. I'm looking at the list of words that I have in my hand that we have been learning in the vocabulary lessons and even though most of you probably know the word but because I'm a non-native speaker sometimes even the simplest word becomes a big deal the word is cognizant and uh, you will find it on day number 42 just type in Keshwani prep just type in Keshwani prep Vocabulary, instead of revised GRE math, just put in vocabulary, day 42 and group up right up. Cognizant, which means to be aware of your surrounding, to be, to be, to be, uh, to have the knowledge of what is going on here. So anyway, so let's, let's finish this up. I'm, I'm, I, I lost track of my thought, thought here for a second. So then what happens next? What happens next is that you got under, watch here, you got under 12 here, 12 plus 12, plus 12 plus 12. 12 plus 12 is 24, 24 plus 12 is 36, and then 48. We got another 48 extra minutes sitting left over, in which we're going to make other x units. So here you have x, and here you have 4 x's. So altogether you're going to make 5 x's, here you're making 6 x's, the answer is a. Voila. That's it. That's all. We're going to, we're going to make 5 x units in 4 hours. We're going to make one more time. We're going to make 5 x units in four hours and how do we know that because I'm going to show you here one more time slowly we're going to make five x units in four hours I'm doing this part here because we, we split our four hours we broke our four hours into four one hours four one hours 48 plus 12 48 plus 12 well I don't need to redo it you, you saw it here I changed my mind that's it right here 48 plus 12, that's one hour, 48 plus 12 is second hour, third hour, fourth hour. In this 48 minutes, we're going to make x unit. In this 48 minutes, we're going to make another x unit. This 48 unit gives you one more x, and here we get one more x. So those are four x's. What about these leftover 12 minutes from the first hour, and the leftover 12 minutes from the second hour, and the 12 minutes here, and 12 minutes there? Well, that's another 48 minutes. Well, so we're going to make another x units. All together, all together we're going to make five x units as opposed to six x units. Therefore, the answer is A. That's it, we're done. Now, I shouldn't have raised the page number. Now, I want to do the same problem one more time with a different method. Here we go. By using a technique called plugging in. Plugging in technique, so called, because you plug in numbers for the variable and by uh, and thereby you convert the algebraic problem into simple arithmetic problem but there's a but part but in the plugging in techniques you have to be smart about what sort of numbers you plug in for example here watch here let's do it one more time here here is your machine machine r and here is your machine s now, had it been real exam, of course, I wouldn't be silly enough to sit there and do nicely two columns and so forth. You save time. I'm just trying to show you the work here. We are told here that it makes 24 units in half an hour. Or rather, not 24 units. 
I think I gave the game away, didn't I? We are told that it makes X units in half an hour, and here we are told that it makes X units in 48 units. Okay. Watch what happens. Okay. Watch what happens. This is how we learn uh, to do plugging in technique. Listen very carefully. We can plug in any number that you want here for X as far as the machine R is concerned, because here we are dealing with a nice half an hour. For example, for example, if I pretend that X is 7, if I pretend that X is 7, it will, do, do, it will do no harm. If it makes 7 units in half an hour, it will make 14 units in 1 hour, it will be 3 times 14 in 3 hours. Just like it was in the algebra, it was very simple. But if whatever number that you plug in for X here, obviously you have to plug in the same thing here. So as soon as you get to here, and you put in 7 here, X equals 7 here, and you realize that all L breaks loose. Because now you are dealing with a machine that makes 7 units in 48 and 48, uh, it makes 70 and 7 units. Why do I keep writing these units here? So now we are dealing with a machine, a bloody thing, makes 7 units in 48 minutes. If it makes 7 units in 48 minutes, how many units does it make in 1 minute? Or how many units does it make in 1 hour? It's a pure hell. That's not a good number to plug in. Because 7 is not a nice multiple of 48. I need something that goes nicely into 48. But do not plug in 48. Do not plug in a number that appears in the problem. If you've been watching my previous videos, because I don't have a luxury of rewriting and repeating the same thing over and over and over again that I've already covered in the previous video, so these are day number 37. If you watch the previous videos, you will learn what numbers to plug in and what not to, and what one of the rules is that one must not plug in a number that appears in the problem. So I am not going to plug in 48. Just plug in half of that. Let's plug in 24. So let's pretend x is x equals 24. So watch what happens. 24 units in half an hour, therefore 48 units in one hour, and therefore 48 times 3 units in 3 hours. So that part is done. That's that 48 times 3. Here we have 24 units in 48 minutes. 24 units. 24 units in 48 minutes. That implies that we must make one unit in two minutes. One minute. Uh, we must. We must make. We must make one unit in two minutes because two times four, two times twenty-four is forty-eight. So if you're taking two minutes to make one unit, then in forty-eight minutes, you should make twenty-four units because twenty-four times two is forty-eight. That also implies that you must make, we must make 30 units in one hour. We are asked to find 4 hours. So it must, that also implies that it must make 30 times 40 in 4 hours. That's it, we are done. That's it. Now all we have to do is compare this quantity, compare this quantity to this quantity. And look what, 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 what happens. This is your column A, this is your column B. I see something common in column A and column B. For example, let me give you a simple example. For example, if you ask me which one is bigger, 6 times 3 versus, uh, versus uh, 9 times 7, you could sit there, you could sit there and figure out 6 times, well, 9 times 7, that's too simple actually. Let's, let's do 9 times 9 times uh, 5. You could sit there and do compare the two. Or you can just divide both columns by 3. If you divide both columns by 3, this, this becomes 2 and this becomes 3. I see a 3 here and I see a 3 here. Let's divide both columns by 3 one more time. If you divide both columns by 3 one more time, then this 3 cancels out with this 3 and this 3 actually can, takes out this 3. And you're left with 1 on this side and 5 on that side. I'm going to do it one more time. 6 times 3 versus 9 times 5. I'm not going to show all the baby steps. I'm not going to show the baby step, I'm just going to do the work. Divide both columns by 3. Divide this column by 3, this column by 3. If you divide this column by 3, the 6 becomes 2 and 9 becomes 3. Divide both columns by 3 one more time. If you divide both columns by 3 one more time, this 3 drops out and that 3 drops out. And you're left with 5 on this column and 1 on this column. So obviously 5 is bigger. We don't actually have to sit there and do 6 times 3 and 9 times 5. That would be a waste of time. So let's do the same thing here. I, do you see anything common? Yeah, I see common here. I see a 30 here, I see a 3 here. Let's divide both sides by 3. So that becomes 10. 
I see a 4 here and I see a 48 here. Take out the 4 and that 48 becomes 12. That's it, we are done. Which one is bigger, 12 or 10? Of course 12 is bigger, the answer is A. That's all. In other words, just because they give you this bloody calculator in exam does not mean that you should reach for the bloody thing every second. It's a waste of time. That's it, we are done. The answer is A, of course, just like before. The answer is not going to change, obviously, just because we use a different method. That will be silly. I will see you tomorrow. On day number 38, where we will do the problem that you see on the bottom of the page 38. Okay? Bye now.